All right, so now we're going to update the firmware and software in the kit. Uh, we need to go into the document, uh, online document, uh, click update your system. And in there we have the project dashboard link, as you'll see, that will open up the portal screen, uh, logon screen. Uh, you can register with an email address and a password or do what I'm going to show you here if you have an existing Google account, sign on with that into the portal. The first thing you will need to do is create an organization. This one's already here because somebody is testing a system, but you will have a blank organization list. So I'm going to add an organization. Uh, let's call that Witra. And you'll need to click on the add button there. Okay. Right. So we've successfully added the Witra organization. Uh, Underneath the organization, we need to add a project. You can uh, add multiple projects within one organization, but in a, the free subscription tier, which uh, we're going to update now, you only get uh, one project. But in a uh, subscription model, you are able to create multiple projects for different use cases, different customers. Uh, I need to create my project. Let's call that now we have our project if I go and click on that then now we have our dashboard we need to uh, add our network kit to the project now so if we click on add device it's asking us to put in a device token or a batch token the batch token is actually located inside the network kit box underneath the gateway. When you lift that out, you'll see a sticker and it's a good idea just to double check those before you click on add devices to project. That's a unique string. Uh, every device that's manufactured has its own unique batch token. Okay, so now you see here we have the dashboard. It's being populated with the devices in the network kit. Uh, we need to go and trigger a manual update of the mesh routers and the tags. The gateway itself will go online and update its software remotely uh, and automatically. You don't need to worry about that. But we need to trigger manual update mode on the other devices in the network kit. So uh, let's do that. Select all and just deselect the gateway like that. Then click the update button it will allow you to review the list of devices you've selected and then there's some instructions there about entering the manual update mode on the devices using the magnet and the reset plug the OTG adapter in the network kit so let's start the manual update like that okay so what we need to do now is actually go and physically trigger the manual update mode so let's go and do that so we take the magnet, it doesn't matter which way up you use it, place it approximately over the W symbol, take the reset plug, micro USB, insert that, leave it there for a second and then just remove it. And now we can see that the LED is doing double blink, then that's indicating that it's in manual update mode. Okay, so the network devices have gone through their manual update process now. They're all updated. We can see here the status uh, in the portal. They are all showing a green status bar. Uh, the tags uh, which are plugged in on the USB cable are showing uh, charging status, charging of the battery. Uh, that process took uh, about 15, 16 minutes. Uh, that's what you can expect for a network kit with this many devices in it. So what I want to do now is go through some of the other tabs in the portal and explain some of the features of what's available here. If you go in and click on uh, this details tab for, uh, I've chosen a tag here, uh, this will show you the type of sensor data that's available and how you can configure the various options for that data, the delivery of that data into the portal. So the first thing to look at here is the posting interval. 
how often will the tag deliver sensor data into the network. The default is set to five minutes. You can change that. Uh, let's lower that down, for example, to one minute and save. Uh, you'll see there you have to confirm that. Now, if I go in uh, and look at the actual data, you can see there's temperature here. That's an internal temperature on the tag, an internal temperature sensor. So if you change the environmental temperature by walking outside or put it in a refrigerator, it will take some time to equalize to that new temperature because the tag is sealed. Let's have a look at this metric here. We've got a metric called moving and stationary. Now, one interesting thing here is if you go into the settings icon, uh, at the moment it's defaulted to interval-based data and we change that from five minutes down to one minute. What we can do if we want to is to actually trigger event-based data. That means that when an event happens, the device will automatically and immediately post data into the network. The event, uh, we define it here in terms of uh, the amount of time moving before it posts uh, that data. So uh, let's say we want to uh, do something like 72 seconds. Okay, um, so you can have event-based data to trigger immediate posting of an event and the event is defined in each of these tabs here. So uh, movement uh, based data or uh, on the other hand stationary, how long has the device been stationary for? So then we end up with a, a usage figure, how much is the device being used as a percentage of time. Moving down we have the raw accelerometer data um, in three axes x, y and z. Uh, so this will show you if the device is actually stationary, um, if it's tilted, if it's moving. Gyroscope, of course, is a dynamic device. It measures rotation. So uh, if the device is still, of course, it's going to produce zero on all the axes, as you can see there. Magnetometer uh, is measuring the orientation of the device relative to the Earth's magnetic fields along north-south grid lines. So uh, you can use that to determine the magnetic orientation of the device. Okay, let's go have a look at some of the other tabs in the portal. Uh, one interesting one is this visualization tab here where you can overlay a floor plan. And uh, let's show you how to do that very quickly. We go to add data, you can load in um, various supported uh, file formats uh, and overlay a floor plan here, stretch it to scale it properly on the map and then save the view and uh, then you need to go and drag your system devices so the gateway and the mesh routers onto the map in a correct position. If you do that then you will be able to position the tags relative to that infrastructure on the map. We won't go into those details here. Integrations, this allows you to export or push the sensor data that we've looked at out to a third party URL. So uh, one of your customers, you might want to do an integration into uh, a backend system they have. They might want to make a fancy uh, GUI dashboard, uh, another kind of mapping system, whatever. So let's create the integration point. We use webhooks and you need to put in the URL that the data is going to be pushed to and just hit create. Other than that, uh, there's just a basic settings tab here which allows you to uh, delete the project if you wish to do so. That concludes uh, this brief overview of the Witra portal. Uh, I hope you enjoy using your network kit.